Now, one of the things I really can't demo effectively, or, or I could, you'd be bored to tears. So I'm going to talk about one of the eight five, probably the most significant feature, and I don't even know if I would call it a feature, attribute, there we go. 8.5 is the first release of Infor that has a mechanism in place to protect your customizations. Those of you who have been through an upgrade, especially a web upgrade, are well aware that they can be expensive into the, you know, five figures and up easily. Uh, if you have a complicated, highly custom system, that has certainly been a knock on Infor, a uh, tough pill to swallow, whatever you want to say about it. Um, that has changed, and we were pleasantly surprised. Customer FX and our technical guys have really dug into this to understand what does this really mean. And so I'm not the technical person here. We'll probably end up doing a technical webinar about 8.5 and its ability to keep your customizations unaffected by upgrades. So once you have gotten on to 8.5, so you're still faced with a traditional you know, upgrade where we have to compare your customizations, we may have to do some retrofitting to get those to function properly with the out-of-the-box screens and views and rules and all of that. But this should be the last expensive upgrade, dare I say, that you'd have to go through. Because once we get you onto 8.5, your customizations are actually stored in a separate manifest. You can't even modify the out-of-the-box code in 8.5. There's probably some ways around it, but the way Infor architected it is it's, it's uh, safe and in its own area. And so if you like, if you make even the slightest modification to the account screen, it actually ends up making a full copy of the out-of-the-box account screen, but then with your custom thing, whatever you did to it. And then from then on, that's your custom screen. So whatever you want to do to it after that is fine. And it's immune from a future upgrade because future upgrades beyond 8.5 always and only affect the out-of-the-box screens, which are, in this example I'm giving you here, unmodified. So you have also the ability to store all your customizations in a custom manifest, so they can be reapplied. Again, I'm the wrong guy to probably get into the technical explanation of what does this all really mean if there are any developers on the call, but we are planning to do a technical version of today's presentation for those of you who want to know. So we'll move on. That's a biggie for sure. 2020, and again, we're kind of excited about the direction of Infor, and you, you'll, you'll figure that out why here in a second. We're really excited about what Infor is doing with Infor CRM, and it's because they had a big influx of cash in for as a company. CRM got a bunch of it, and they are ramping up and have been for the last year or so the development of the CRM platform. So we've seen 843 come out. We've seen 8404 come out. We've seen a new mobile come out in September of last year and a new XBAR that came out. So we've kind of covered all this stuff, so I won't dwell on this too much. But then when we get into 8.5, you know, which has been out now for about two months or so, it really focuses on three primary functional or feature upgrades or updates. The upgrade safe customizations, the new dashboards area, which we're going to show you, and the new workflow slash, which is approval. So we workflow is generic. There's workflow and alerting built into 8.5. Well, there was an 8.404 also. That, that was a notification only in 8404. The only workflow there was was a notification. Somebody can get an email if something triggers it to do that in the database. That's great. Uh, those of you that use Knowledge Inc., for example, that you know have it sending out your email alerts, uh, this may completely replace that as native functionality. I, I, it'll never do as much as Knowledge 
thing. But if you're only using policy to send email alerts, then this could replace it. So the new workflow that's been added is approvals, and that's the one we'll show. Then there's a bunch of language packs coming out in April, which I didn't look. They may already be out because here we are in April. But here's kind of the really significant one is the looking ahead. There's already an 8501 due in July. And finally, oh my gosh, after what, 20 years? Mail merge will actually not need ActiveX, which means you don't need Internet Explorer 11, which means nobody will ever get hacked again or get a virus, right? No, that's not true. But I use that. Understandably, it's slow. And so there's a new Java, I think it's Java-based, mail merge engine, which allows you to have Word templates with data merged into them. You know, that's been just a horrible thing to have to deal with. I know it causes a lot of heartburn for a lot of our customers who are trying to, you know, make the current version work. I think IE is even discontinued and all that, so it makes it even weirder that you have to have that. So thank you, Infor, for working on getting rid of mail merge requirements on IE and ActiveX. 64-bit application architect is huge. You know, building and deploying can take 30 minutes, an hour, and then it crashes. I'm out of memory. The system locks up, and that's just kind of the day in life with our developers. The fact that it can run at 64-bit, which means you can have a whole lot more RAM available to that program when it's running, can't wait. That should make the chore of you know developing and building and deploying and testing what you just built way more efficient. Uh, I don't know what a lot of this other stuff is, so I'm just going to let you read it, but core merge utility, not 100% sure. jQuery updated, good. Uh, some of this is related to the integrated systems for our customers that have ION integration to their in for ERP systems, such as Cloud Suite Distribution or in for Visual. There's some new features coming. Um, same with hard delete capabilities for back office integration. All these bullet points, uh, in fact, all, all of them from jQuery on down are related to the way CRM interacts and works with an integrated in for ERP product through their iOS system using IN for the integration. So there's a mouthful. There's probably some of you on the call that know exactly what I'm talking about, and most of you are going move on, please. But that's all good stuff. Here are some high-level initiatives for the next 12-plus months. They continue to improve the user interface. And there's a few minor changes we're going to look at in 8.5 here in a second. But then there's some other functionality, such as auto-scheduling a follow-up for a soon-to-expire quote. No doubt that's going to be powered by their workflow notification engine. Configurable key performance indicators, love that. Can't wait to see what that's about. Speed search, again, great search tool, but kind of antiquated. It's really 90s-ish, um, you know, kind of a cl classic uh, user experience. Not a good thing necessarily. Anxious to see how they improve that. Mail merge we talked about. We talked about ERP enhancements a little bit. High points here, I'll just bounce along, you know, images for accounts and contacts. And so we can store photographs of your contacts and accounts. So a lot like what you're probably used to in Outlook. Show tasks by day under the calendar. It's funny how many customers have asked us for this. It's really important to them to be able to see their tasks on the day view of the, uh, or yeah, on the calendar view, the graphical calendar view, they want to show their tasks at the same time for for that, which you have always have had it in the land, but it was left out in the web, and now it's coming back. A new account summary view, love to see it. Projects, that's huge. That's probably the number one enhancement we get as far as, you know, how do we widen the the footprint? of CRM within, a, within an organization? What, how do we stretch it beyond traditional CRM and projects is almost inevitably always what we hear. So it looks like they're adding that. 
Click account, add. So you can be in a call center. Somebody calls my name is Johnny Quest. I have this problem. I can add him as a contact in account on the fly from a ticket or an opportunity, which is great. Lead conversion tracking, not sure. And Teams integration, that was another big one. You know, in our COVID world that we're in, everything is virtual meetings now. It's the rule rather than the exception. And so they're choosing to integrate with Microsoft Teams, which is great. It's a very, very popular web conference tool. Technology enhancements, performance enhancements, we always like to see those, more horsepower. Integration uh, with Ion workflows, I won't get into that. That's another whole workflow topic discussion. 64-bit uh, job manager, another biggie. The job manager is, you know, schedules things to happen in the background. It's a task runner or fireer or make it go thing. That's part of Infor, the job manager. And it's fragile. You know, it it locks up a lot. <laughs> We've had to write a lot of programs that restart it all the time and all that. So I'm really glad to see they're, they're going to beef that guy up. And I think it's because more and more of these systems now – have so much more back end stuff going on when it comes to integrations and you know mapping and reports and BI tools and ERP integrations and you know it just goes on and on and on website integrations and web stores and all that stuff gets powered by the job manager and I think it just runs out of gas and so they're they're going to beef that up love it uh, unified customization platform another huge one right now you have to develop mobile and an HTML5 editor and the web client and a, one of the other editors, and so they're going to unify all, how you modify all that stuff. Good. The other big one is the uh, attachments are finally going to be integrated with in for iOS again, which those of you who are not, not sure what that is, that's Infor's operating system, and that's available for free, a light version to all, all of the Infor customers. It adds a lot of enhancements like a chat engine, um, <clears throat> dashboard, more, more dashboards, and it also has a document management system built into it with actual change control, change tracking. So they're, they're going to be shifting from the attachment tab thing that's, you know, again, been there since day one to hopefully – the much more robust official uh, document management solution that's built into the Infor iOS system. That all sounds like a good thing to me too. So wait for that to come. Just want to touch on this. We get asked this a lot, version support and life cycle. Um, we'll make this slide available to you, but it kind of gives you exposure into how long is my older version of Infor Serum going to be supported. Um, you know, they have different uh, milestones that moves through mainstream. So like 8.5 came out two months ago. It's going to be mainstream for four more years. After that, for two more years, it goes into extended. So it's only severe and critical bugs will be dealt with. And after six-plus years from the initial release, uh, it goes into just sustaining. Uh, so... Here's an example, 8402 came out in September 2019, and so it's going to be end of mainstream, mainstream 2023. So you get the drift here. Uh, so six years is kind of that magic gate where Infor says, okay, you, you can still get fixes that we've already produced, but we're not going to do anything else with it to make it compatible or fix bugs or whatever after six years years. And by the way, this applies to the web and the LAN client. So they don't differentiate, hey, we're going to stop supporting the LAN client on this date or whatever. The LAN client is going to soldier on uh, just like the web client is. I would highly encourage you, and Brie, you'll have to help me figure out how to do this, but Infor has been doing a great job with producing really high value professional I'll call them training demo videos about the new things that are coming in for CRM. So we, t we talked at the very beginning about, you know, all the things that are new with 8.5. So there's a video, there's a free training video out there on their campus. I don't think you can just go to YouTube and get it. So you got to go to campus.info.com 
and then there's this big long link. You can search for it, that much is true. So if you search for V8.5, once you get to campus.info.com, you'll see a really good video on the, it's kind of a whole what's new, it's like 20 minutes or 15 minutes long. And then there's another great big video just on all the new dashboard stuff. I'm going to touch on it today, but I don't have time to cover all of it. I don't think I keep you interested that long. And then there's also another one on the workflow. So there's a whole video about the new 8.5 approval workflow, which we'll touch on briefly today too in the live demo, which we will do now. So here we go. 8.5 will start out by saying you have still in 8.5 your legacy, that's what I'm calling it, that's not official, dashboards area. And, and the reason I uh, thank you in for because I think the reason they kept the old dashboards is because a lot of you have a lot of time invested in building out and creating meaningful dashboards for yourself and your team. So they just, want, they just didn't want to get rid of it. These might be perfectly sufficient for some, but then they added the new dashboard area. And they've added a couple of new widgets. One of them is a donut, donut widget. And the second one is this guy. And if you go into add a widget, that's what they call a gauge. So that's a gauge widget. Now you'll notice this gauge widget not only has a green bar that says here's how you're doing based on the data, but you'll also notice there's a threshold here. And so if you click on this little gear, you have a goal goal line. Well, okay, my my green bar is halfway. Well, is that good or bad? Am I doing great? Well, you're halfway there from what you're seeing here. You're at about 100 million, and you're supposed you're about 102 million short of the 200 million goal. This must be Brianna's sales numbers. So that is what this is doing. I don't. I honestly don't know a whole lot about why. Why is a donut different than a pie? One has a hole in it. I don't really know what what else is different about it. Now the other thing that is really cool about this new dashboard engine is it has more than one data source at a time. So what you're looking at here is the same data, it's opportunity data, but the actual and the potential are displaying at the same time on the same widget. And you, you see a go line out here too. So if we go here and we look at the data sources, we're actually looking at two different groups of data at the same time. So you're kind of scratching into true BI type functionality where I can intermix, amalgamate data uh, onto one widget from two different things, two different places. And you'll see that throughout here like this little line chart has my goals and everybody else's goals. So compared to everybody else, I'm really down here. That's probably my, my chart. So that is another example of um, two data sources presenting at the same time on the same widget along with a goal line. The other cool thing that you can now do with these is some of them have a lasso or a selection capability. Well, so what if I only wanted to see like, um, you know, a couple of these reps, I can drag a little box here and go, only those people. So it gives me a drill in to those uh, components of this, I guess, the data itself, that I want to drill into a little bit further and you can always reset it back out again. So again, a very BI-ish, if that's a word, uh, type of uh, functionality, um, this ability to drill in, say, well, let's just look at these two months right here. So you can see that. And you can also like grab it and move it back and forth and uh, pan it, okay, left and right. Very cool. Take a picture of it, um, you know, do a, 
go back out again, auto scale kind of backs you all the way back out again to the, the top view. Again, cool stuff. This is all free. You get this. This is all included. Awesome. You can build your own. It's not a right click anymore. You have to go up here and say I want a new widget or rename it or whatever you kind of like the old one. So they made it familiar. It's just a little different in how you create these things. Um, but love it. All, all good stuff. Okay. So a little bit of a difference I noticed in the user interface, just a couple things. The, the icons are slightly different. They use a different association and link icons. So there's a few new icons for clarity, which I think are great. Also, every list view now has a hyperlink in the first column. I often forget to do that. You know, I'll build a group or somebody and go, well, how come I can't click on it and go there? That's a hyperlink. They now have that by default on every group you build. The first column always is a hyperlink to the to the data, which is good. Next thing we'll look at is workflows. Workflow now has a place over on the nav bar for you to go see under the sales area workflows that are running or had run or what have you. So these are all the workflows. And again, explain a little bit more. A workflow, what does that mean? It in in this early stage, it's a notification engine. It sends emails to somebody for a reason. You did, you build the reason. You say what you want it to say in the email, and you pick who gets the email. So that's what it is. And, and, but but Enforce, with every release, is adding more and more functionality to this. They're committed to it, and, and I have a feeling it's going to get really good after a while. Um, so we'll we will see. So if we go to Coca-Cola, for example, use a new workflow tab, and you can see, ah, sure enough, there's an opportunity related to Coca-Cola here, and there is a active workflow that fired or triggered and, and sent a notification. What is a little bit tricky, you must have to memorize this, well, how do you build these workflows? So you got to go into integration, step one. Integrations, step two. Then you got to go to the workflow integration. Uh, and here they are. So now we're looking at workflows. And I actually skipped a step here because really to get all the way there, you would have to look at all the integrations here and find the one that says CRM workflow, not the one that says Ion workflow. It's a different workflow. <laughs> so the CRM workflow one takes you here and here's all your workflows. So I told you at the beginning what's new in 8.5 is a second type of workflow, which is in a approval workflow. So that is this one. Let's take a look at it. So what we've told this workflow is, hey, look, I want you to watch and see if any quote has a greater than a 20% discount, because if it does, we need somebody to approve that, the owner, a manager, whoever uh, needs to approve it. So that's what this particular one is doing. It's set up to send a notification when a quote exceeds 20%, and you build that you know, just using the condition builder. If you build groups, you're used to this. You're used to this. And all these variables you have here, attributes, you set those all up in the entity manager. So there's a new attribute in the entity area. I don't mean for this today to be a big training thing. You'll see more of this if you were willing to watch the video. But you set up these, and that's where all these attributes are coming from, this big long list. These are the fields that have been elevated to be available as an attribute to build a query that's powering a step in a workflow. Yikes. So there we have that. And if we look at the step now, so okay, this happened. Somebody discounted more than 20%. 
what do you want me to do about it? So this, what we're going to do about it is we're going to send an email to somebody, and you have these at, which are little tokens of pre-built uh, destinations, and kind of like a merge field. So it can look at all these fields and merge that piece of information into here. And then the recipient is, well, this approval, who should, who, who needs to approve it? And so the second tab says, okay, if this happens, if this happens, everybody on the approver list has to approve it for it to be approved. Or you can say, I only need one of these two people to approve it. One of them is good enough. Don't need both. And you can also say, well, if nobody approves it after 14 days, ha, I can send out this quote at half price so nobody can yell at me. You can also have an observer who can add some kind of feedback to the notification, but they, they're not an actually an approval approver. So as you can see, it could be a team or a department or a user. Uh, or pull the pull from the user table, the user info info table, or the owner. Anybody where I can get an email from, <laughs> I can use uh, as as an observer. So that's how that works. And then once one of these fires because somebody quoted something at too big of a discount, it will show up on the CRM workflow tab. Every entity. And of course, then from there, you can click on approve it or decline or whatever you want to do if you're an approver. So every single entity now in 8.5 has a workflow tab. Why am I not seeing it? Am I blind? Maybe it's not everyone. I thought it was everyone. Everyone I looked at had it, but maybe they all don't. Anywho, so I can drag that up there. Uh, that's it. So, Bree, any questions? I, I think I've covered everything I was hoping to today, and I'm ironically right on schedule. Yes, yeah, Scott, right now um, we have one question, and this one came in back when we were on the dashboard area. Sure. Um, and the question is, can you click in to get the detail of the data behind an area of the graph? Yeah, so you see this view group? That is exactly what that is. That's going to show you, let's just look. So if we look at this is powered by, you know, a data source, a ticket group. It's powered by a ticket entity, I should say. And it's all open tickets. So that's where we're going to go. So if we click on show me that group that's powering this line chart, it's going to show me the all open ticket. So that's the drill into the data that's powering that graph. Okay, um, we had another question come up, and this one is asking whether or not there is a way to get a trial of the web version of 8.5. Infor does not have trials. So what you would have to do is reach out to your business partner, and if it's us, we will make a trial of 8.5 web available to you but it is a case-by-case -case basis and it's up to your partner to make, make one available to you. Infor doesn't have trial systems, unfortunately. All right, Scott, as of right now, those are our only two questions. Um, okay. I'll just mention again that we will have this recording up on our site here before the end of the week. And, um, well, yeah, and, and can we, too, Brie, can we put those links to those three, eight, five training videos from Infor? Can that be on that page, too? Uh, yes, well? we we can add okay. those uh, links. Okay. Scott, if you want to just make those or send those yeah. over to me um, after okay. this. And Scott, we did have one more question come in. Um, and I don't know if you'll be able to answer this or not, but possibly. Uh -oh. And the question is, has there been any talk about integrating CRM data into CSD analytics um, AKA Burst, the new Infor BI reporting and dashboard system? Yeah. <laughs> we're actually Burst certified because we were told three years ago that we are going to be selling Burst because it's going to be fully integrated into CRM. 
So we, we went through all of that and thought it was an incredible tool, love Burst. But then at some point there was a strategic decision made that not going to integrate in for CRM with Burst. So it's not on the roadmap for now, but we do have customers who have successfully exposed the data in CRM to Burst. It's just not a plug and play like we were kind of hoping it would be, um, but you can embed it you know, as an iframe inside of Infor, and you can connect it uh, to the Infor database and pull data out of it for your data warehouse that's powering Burst. So you can build an integration is my answer. Unfortunately, there's no built-in integration as we had hoped and we're told there might have been. That's why Infor has that disclaimer. They say things, but they can't guarantee it's going to happen, and we're just okay with that because they have other priorities. So it can it can work. It can be made to work. Long answer. All right, Scott. And that looks like uh, all we have. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate you uh, hanging in there with us and let, letting us show this to you. Stay tuned for more. We're going to try to keep up with Infor every time they come out with something new. We're going to try to continue to do these hopefully valuable webinars for you. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.